In this video, we'll take a look at the new Variable Outline tool, available in CorelDRAW and Corel Designer. This tool enables you to interactively adjust lines, curves, and outlines using nodes at one or more points along the path to specify different line widths. The variable widths are preserved when curves or lines are edited. Variable outlines are great for adding depth to your drawings by creating hand-drawn or calligraphic effects. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. We're starting with this cartoon-style illustration created by Corel Draw artist Ivan Fedorovich, and we'll use the Variable Outline tool to add a dynamic line style to various elements. I'll start by working on the lightning bolt and use the Objects Inspector to hide the objects that are in front of this curve. When I select this object with the Pick tool, the property bar lists a uniform width of 8 pixels. There are several ways to access the Variable Outline tool. By default, the Variable Outline tool is the last tool in the toolbox, or I can press the V shortcut, and now my cursor has the Variable Outline symbol. Because the lightning bolt was already selected, it is automatically selected for Variable Outlines, and its outline is now a red dashed line. To give this object the illusion of depth, it should be thicker at its top and get narrower as it enters the cloud. To achieve this effect, I'll add nodes along the outline to specify different outline widths. There are a few different ways to add nodes. I have object snaps turned on, which will enable me to snap to edges, nodes, midpoints, etc. To add the first node, I'll click once on the outline to add a node at the top corner, go to the property bar, and click Add Node. Each node has two arrows for side 1 and side 2 thicknesses. These are both currently 4 pixels, which add up to the 8 pixel width. Dragging either arrow changes the width uniformly on both sides, with the red preview lines indicating the line width at this node. Releasing the mouse applies the new width, and both values update in the property bar. Now the outline transitions evenly from about 21 pixels in the corner down to 8 pixels on the opposite side, but I need more variable widths to get the look I want. The second way to add a node is to double click on the outline, which I'll do in this corner, and adjust to get the width I want. For more precise widths, I'll double click to add nodes in the remaining corners. I'll select both top nodes by clicking while holding the Shift key for consecutive selection, and make the entire thickness 20 by assigning 10 pixels to each side. For the next two nodes, I'll hold Command for individual multi-selection and make both sides 8. Node properties can also be copied. For this node, I'll make both widths 6, then right-click the node to bring up the context menu and choose Copy Node Properties. Now I'll right-click the other node I want to have the same width and paste node properties. The node at the bottom will have a total outline thickness of 4. Here's the more dynamic lightning bolt with the cartoon fingers added back in. Now let's look at one of the cloud-shaped curves. I'll press V for the Variable Outline tool, and because the cloud's curve wasn't selected in advance, I now need to select it. A third way to add a node is to click and drag, which both creates the node and sets its width. Let's say I want the thickness to change only on the outside of the object. I'll hover over the inside arrow to see that it's side 2, and change that width to 0. Now if I drag either arrow, the same amount of new width will be added to both sides, but if I hold the Shift key, I'll change only the side whose arrow I'm dragging. A fourth way to create a node is to right-click along the curve and choose Add Variable Node. At this node, I'll make side 2 0 as before, and hold Shift to adjust the outside width. In addition to the property bar fields, I can also use the Properties Inspector to adjust widths. Note that I can do this whether or not the Variable Outline tool is active, as long as the curve is selected. In the Variable Outline section of the Inspector, I can see the two nodes I added based on percent distances along the curve starting from the curve's start point. If the Variable Outline tool is active, I can move a node by dragging it in the drawing. With any tool active, I can also move nodes by dragging them on the node controller, or by entering a percent distance. For the currently selected node, I can adjust widths here as well. 
Enabling the lock icon constrains the width added or subtracted from either side to be identical. Double clicking along the node controller adds another node to the curve, and double clicking a node removes it. When the variable outline tool is active, I can do this directly on the curve itself. A selected node can also be deleted from the property bar or from the context menu. Since I have a few similar clouds, I can make them all look uniform by copying the entire variable outline from the cloud I just worked on. I'll select a different cloud with a variable outline tool, then click Copy Variable Outline in the property bar, and click the curve with the variable widths I want to copy. Because the wider part appears on the opposite side from the original cloud, and the new widths are inward and not outward, I need to reverse this cloud's start and end points. So I'll activate the Shape tool and click Reverse Direction. This means, for example, that a node that was previously located at a 25% distance along the curve is reversed to be now located at 75%. If these are variable width settings I'll want to use on other objects or in different designs, I can save them as an object style. I'll right click on a cloud curve and choose Object Styles, New Style From, Outline, and name the style Variable Cloud Outline. With the Object Styles Inspector open, in the current drawing, I can now drag this object style onto any curve to apply the same properties. To use this style in another drawing, I would have to export the style sheet and import it into the new drawing. Variable widths can also be accessed from the Outline Pen window. With this straight line selected, I'll press Command-Shift-P to open this window, double-click on the node controller to add a node, place it at the very end, and change the total width to 2 pixels, which updates the widths for sides 1 and 2. For the new node I'm adding at the other end, the new total width will be 16. This is an easy way to get a uniform taper. And now, when I return to the Variable Outline tool, I can select the neighboring curves one at a time and copy the variable width properties from the tapered line. Finally, variable widths can be applied to any objects with outline widths, such as rectangles, ellipses, bezier or pen curves, etc. With this rectangle selected with the Pick tool, the outline width and type are listed in the property bar, which also has a variable outline tool icon. Now, as before, I can add some nodes to give the rectangle the same whimsical look as the objects in the drawing itself. Here is the final result, with variable outlines applied throughout the various elements, a much more lively design than the original. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the variable outline tool. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.